Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. It's Friday oh. and we've actually got some questions that have appeared on Extra Time. Okay. And they're recurring questions, shall we say. Okay, now, so we'll see if anyone's changed their mind. Last time I did Extra Time, Dan had some issues reading the questions and mm. quite frankly, it was a little embarrassing. A little sort of Ron Burgundy, Anchorman sort of situation. So just be careful what you're reading. <laughs> we do have some uh, culinary delights okay. again, right. okay. just, to, just to give you a heads up. I will be careful. Okay, Divyanch says, Julian, what percentage chances do you give for Mbappe to be anywhere except for Real Madrid whenever he leaves PSG? Anywhere except Real Madrid, it has to be really low because as we've been saying, it's his dream, it could finally be there. I think all the pieces are there for next summer, so I would say, but as we said, anything is possible too. 5%, maybe 95% chances that he ends up at Real Madrid and 5 that is somewhere else. All right, very, very low. Uh, Prem Sager says, Stevie, who would you have signed for your team if you were managing a team this season? and were allowed to sign only one among Diaz, Varane or Van Dijk? Mm. Um, I'm going to go for Diaz. One, because Van Dijk is, is, is coming off a, a particularly bad injury. We don't know whether he's going to be as quick uh, or as agile. I mean, he, 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 could, he could have suffered physically from it. Uh, I'm going to take Diaz over Varane because Diaz is younger. Uh, and Diaz was the player of the year last year, not only for Man City, but the league. So, yeah, I'm going to take Diaz. All right, Sebastian's trying to trick me up here, Ale. Okay. I don't know if it's an emoji okay. or if he's making fun. So, it, is, it does show on the screen as okay. Ox Ox Tail. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, he says, I had Ox Ox Tail last week in NYC, maybe. <laughs> Very hipster, NYC. Yes. It was rather good. The Ox Ox Tail, yes. Okay. On more pressing matters, Ali and Stevie, seeing Haaland play, does it feel he's wasting a year in Dortmund? Does it make more sense for him to move on now? Or is he waiting to go to Barca and battle Mbappe in La Liga next year, Ali? I don't think he's wasting a year in Dortmund. I think he is getting better. I think he's adding nuance to his game. I think he's adding maturity and growth to his game so that when he makes this big move, wherever he goes, he is gonna be at the very top of his game. Erling Haaland continues to get better and every time you watch him play, you say to yourself, man, this guy's something special. I would love to have that guy on my team. We did see him frustrated in the Super Cup though, Stevie. Is he going to win anything with Dortmund this year? Listen, the whole scheme of things for him, it's, it's looking from the outside. It's not for him this year about winning anything. It's about getting to the place that Ali's talking about. And that is that when he does make that move for an incredible amount of money, that he's comfortable with it. And wherever he goes, he can, he can start by just doing what he does best and scoring goals. And he's not any sort of flop. Um, it's not just about having ability. You know, a lot of it's about what goes on between your ears. And, and this extra year, maturity-wise for him, I think will be absolutely, uh, it, it will stand him in good stead. And time is on his side. Correct. Yeah. Uh, Ethan says, Jules, how does it make more sense for Arsenal to sign Ramsdale for 30 million to be the second choice keeper instead of Onana for a fraction of the cost? Well, yeah, a, a much bigger fraction because I think Onana would have cost you 6 million. They, they like Ramsdale, they like the personality, they like the, uh, the leadership qualities, I think. They like the fact that he knew the Premier League already. I, I don't know, I, it's, I, and I don't think he comes as a number two, I think he comes as another really strong goalkeeper, certainly in Arteta's eyes, to come and compete with Leno. I don't know what that means for Leno's future right now and next summer maybe if he's still there, but I wouldn't be surprised if Ramsdale would start some point in the Premier League and, and take that number one spot. What is it about jewels and keepers at teams that he likes? Arsenal, mm. PSG, mm -hmm. backup keepers, <laughs> what, what's going on Jules? <laughs> <laughs> it's just my teams are not good for goalkeepers. You know, we, we're all about attacking. I mean, one especially, the other one, not even so much. What, right. what kind of character is Onana? Mm. 
Yeah. Girls. Oh. Yeah, going deep now. Well, I don't even know if they know Onana's character. I mean, I know Onana's character because I've, I've been following him because he's, he's, oh, he speaks French and he's from Cameroon, but they certainly know Ramsdale's personality and character. And I think, you know, he's that kind of strong character, strong leader that, that they want it. And I don't, I don't think they explore Onana whatsoever, but maybe it's one of the reasons why they went for Ramsdale because of that personality right. more than, than anyone else, whether that's Onana or someone else. I'll tell you, this guy, Ramsdale, man, he better be some sort of personality and character when the difference is $24 million for a guy who right now is a backup goalkeeper. Uh, that's a lot of money. It is. Uh, Shashank Shikar <laughs> says, Stevie, Ferdinand Vidic, Chiellini Benucci, or Ramos Varane? What's the best centre-back pairing? I know who's not going to be. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I know who's not going to be. <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Ooh, that's a, that's a tasty one, that. Oh. You know, when you say, I know who it's not going to be, it yeah. could actually work for all three of them with Stevie. Well, <laughs> no. do, you know, do you know what? I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Ferdinand and Vidic. Right. And the reason I'm going to go with Ferdinand and Vidic over Chiellini and Bonucci is that Ferdinand was a better footballer than all of those three, all the other three, including his partner. But, but as a parent, they're, they're both fantastic. Listen, Varane and Ramos were good, but you're, you're looking at maybe, arguably, two of the best, Kaelin and Benucci and Ferdinand and Vidic. Yeah, I'm going to go with Ferdinand and Vidic. For Final answer. Just, just for that reason, because Ferdinand was a better player than either Kaelin or Benucci. All right. Uh, Keston James. Jules, why hasn't a top club bid 100 million for Haaland now and allowed Dortmund to keep him this season. Surely Dortmund would take the dollars. Any surprise no club has done this? That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Although, again, if you're a club, if you pay 100 million for anyone, you don't want him to be low now. So after, even if that means you securing it, securing that deal for now, so you don't have a bidding war for next summer, for example, when the release clause uh, kicks, 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 up, kicks off. So, uh, yeah, OK, maybe it's not a bad idea on paper, but when you look at it, if you're a club that spent 100 million, you want, you want Haaland now. You don't want to loan him out for a year and anything can happen. You know, he can get injured or he, he wants to change his mind. He doesn't want to come to you. I don't know, wh whatever. I think if you spend that kind of money, you want him to come. The problem is it would have cost you far more than 100 million to try to get him out of Dortmund right now, even if he's to loan him back to Dortmund. So that's why maybe no one tried. I, I just think that next summer, once there's that release close, it's going to be fascinating to see who goes for Mbappe, who goes for Haaland, if maybe it's the same club in Real Madrid, for example, and what kind of sort of bidding wars we have in two transfers that would be very different in a way, but also very similar. Ali, don't feel left out by the name on this next tweet. That's OK. The Stevie Don and Jules fanboy. Oh. All right, but I am going to ask you first. <laughs> <laughs> Which transfer saga has annoyed ESPN FC this summer, Kane or Mbappe? You're asking the non-Stevie Don or Jules. I am. Oh, well, this is really <laughs> going to make him happy. Um, I'm going to say Mbappe. And the reason I say Mbappe is because, as Jules has pointed out earlier in this segment, it's a very high likelihood that we already know what the outcome is going to be. But similarly, Kane, you sort of know what the outcome is going to be as well. So both of them just seem to be going on and on forever. But I, I do think that there is going to be an ending to Kane ones, whereas Mbappe, we're going to keep talking about it up until last year. So... <laughs> <laughs> you, you okay, okay? Sounds like you had something to say. <laughs> yeah. What would you like yeah. to say, Stevie? Well, well, he was saying, well, he was saying plenty gonna, while I was talking. I'm not going to say it because somebody would say well, whatever I said stunk. So I'm not going to yeah. do that. So I'm well, not going to do that. You said plenty already. <laughs> So, Jules, which transfer saga has annoyed you more this summer, Kane or Mbappe? 
Annoying is the wrong word. Because I think the next 10 days are going to be long for both of them. We're going to talk about it every day. I mean, you know, in Spain, they're still convinced that Mbappe is coming this summer to Real Madrid. So... I guess I, I agree with, with Ali, I think Mbappe, because we know he's going to come to Real Madrid at some point. And for Kane, it's just that the sort of, always the same narrative of Daniel Levy, he's such a hard, he drives a hard bargain, he doesn't want to pick even the phone, all of that. But I think that eventually, I, I just think that the next 10 days are going to be even more tiring and annoying than the, the, the first three weeks that we've had of this transfer window this month in August. I do hope that the Stevie Dunn and Jules fanboy mm. is happy with Jules's answer there. We already know he won't be happy with Alex's answer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I, I don't know what I did to Stevie Dunn and Jules fanboy. <laughs> yeah, we want an LA fanboy, all right? Anyway, thank you so much for your questions and thank you for watching oh. us on the latest and edition. Thank you, Stevie. Stevie. You've had it a lot. And thanks yeah. for My your pleasure. contribution, Stevie. <laughs> uh, ESPN FC available seven days a week. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.